The researchers have identified the first 1,000 days of a child's life as a critical window of time that sets the stage for a person's intellectual development and lifelong health. On the coffee group today, we are talking about how to make the most of this time. Welcome mum and daughter, Dr. Rosemary Lyons and Jenny Chapman. Welcome, guys. Thanks. Thanks and much. hope as well. So mother, daughter, granddaughter. Yeah. Uh, now, Rosemary, you're a psychologist. So first, tell us about this important stage of life. Oh, the first 1,000 days has become really topical in research uh, with children. And it is the, the most important time for brain development because the brain from uh, conception to two years has this phenomenal development and it will never ever again be as fast. So the first thousand days is the foundation for brain development and for learning and everything is set up at that time. Mm, and if anyone's ever had any experience with babies, they know how the vast changes and what they learn mm, every single day absolutely. and what they're going through. It's yeah. fascinating, isn't it? Yeah, now, Jenny, you're a mum of four yeah. and you're also a primary school teacher. So what's yeah. your experience with the youngest age groups? Well, so from having my own children, um, just learning learning about how their brain develops has been just amazing. When, when you overlay that on top of what I learnt being a primary school teacher, and so I've been a primary school teacher for 17 years and uh, something that I've really noticed is actually the decline in the oral language ability of lots of our children that enrol in school. Lots of children are enrolling with oral language of um, about a level of a two-year-old. Wow. Um, which of course sets them up for a real difficult uh, beginning in, learn in terms of learning how to read and mm. in terms of learning how to write. Mm. So why, is the, why do you think it's been such a decline? I think um, the... I think parents, uh, lots, of, lots of families aren't putting that importance on spending that crucial first thousand days and time together in developing that vital relationship, particularly that one-on-one -on -one relationship and the interaction. And um, in Māori, um, we say kānohi ki te kānohi, the face-to-face -face intera mm. interaction with people. Yeah. Rosemary, what should we be doing then? Um, oh, look, there's so much to do and none of it needs to cost a lot of money. It's just being with your child, making eye-to-eye -eye contact, doing lots of stimulating things. You know, even just chatting about what you're doing in the house. Mm. Or, you know, we're going out in the car, where do you think we'll go? Hop in your car seat, you've got a lovely car seat. So you just have that just continual constant, commentary. Constant, yeah. yeah. The problem with this is, though, is that when you do this with your children, is that you, you carry it on into your working life as well. When you get to your workplace, you go, I'm just going to go to the toilet. Yeah, I'm just going to go to the toilet. Yeah, We've all found ourselves, yeah. We've all yeah. found ourselves yeah. doing that. Yeah. Um, so, Jenny, you've taught your youngest child, Tereo, and New Zealand Sign Language. Yeah. yeah. So, um, initially, we did it as a bit of an experiment, to be honest, because a really good friend of mine um, suggested that I try it. And I thought, all right, I'll give it a go. I've got a bit more time this time round with an age gap and I thought what a great way to teach uh, her to communicate um, so we did sign language and just phrasal te reo Māori as well um, and what blew me away was that from eight months she started signing back and sharing her own ideas wow. and we were shocked that she could tell us what she wanted what she needed you know I need a nappy change or from eight months so what from sort of eight thing would she months. do so she'd she'd go she'd get our attention and then she'd go dog outside, you know, outside on the swing, or she'd go, I want some food, or miraka, want some milk, or um, change my nappy, <laughs> I so want to go to bed. So you're really combining two of our languages. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, it's fascinating too, because usually at that age, uh, most parents just go, they're, they're, they're yelling or they're, or yeah. they're crying, and that's how you, how you read them. Yeah. Um, so as grand to Jenny's kids, have you noticed the difference between the, uh, the kids who sign and those who uh, don't? Well, with hope, you know, only signer so <laughs> far. Uh, what we noticed was, as you say, you know, reduction in frustration and this willingness to communicate and to expect that people are going to talk back to her. Mm. And some of the things she did, like she named people on her own, like my mother, so Hope's great-grandmother came to visit and we called her Granny. But Hope gave her dog. So whenever she saw my mother, she would go dog because mum had a wee dog. <laughs> oh, good. She brought okay. it yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. That one. Me yeah. and um, my husband uh, were cows. Yeah. Because <laughs> we live on a farm. Yeah. So she's really was spontaneous yeah. about creating. And I think knowing that she was thinking, like mm. we were really surprised really at how shocked. much she was thinking. Mm. Now, they, the, the babies don't talk because they can't talk, yeah. but that thinking was just stunning. Phenomenal. Jenny, yeah. how's it helped you as a parent? Oh, it's, it's made life so much less frustrating because I actually know what she wants. And my husband too, you know, he, when he was looking after her at one point when she was eight months mm -hmm. old and she was screaming and then he goes, what do you want? And she said, oh, I want a bath. 
an instant crying stop. Dad, he, could, he could bath her and then she was happy again. Awesome. You know, so huge reduction in frustration. And you're not fluent in te reo or in sign language. So how did you get not. started? So I wanted to learn uh, sign with her and uh, living in Rotorua, I wanted to learn te reo. So I've learned alongside my children. And that's the whole point of this book is that it's easy. Anyone no, can learn can it. Can I have a look, Hope? Can there I have a look at this one? There are amazing uh, online you. resources through New Zealand Sign Language, online dictionary, oh. online apps amazing te reo Māori resources. So I just learnt alongside my children, one word at a time. So you Anyone guys can have do it. created this. So if people yeah. want to get a hold of this, where can they get a hold of it? Uh, so uh, kiwisign.nz is, uh, is our website. So you can buy it online. Um, Wheelers have it, uh, as well as um, some local bookshops in Rotorua. Atlantis and McLeods. Find, and you should yeah. find it. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you both. Thank, Thank you, you so yeah. much. Thank you so much. Really fascinating stuff. Thank you, Hope. You've been a very, Thank very good girl. Kaki te anu. Bye. Uh, great <laughs> advice, too. Thank you so much for coming in. Now, you can visit the website, as we mentioned, kiwisign.nz, for more information on the research and Jenny's books as well.